first of all, I take the opportunity on behalf of the Crawford Season to say thank you to you all for coming. Hope you're enjoying yourself here. Please leave yourselves at home. A bit late, halfway through, but okay. Um, so, um, the purpose of um, the rather cryptically titled talk I'm about to give is um, to discuss the evolving relationship between copywriting and creative AI, or more specifically, um, how we can harness the potential of creative AI to really put the artistry back into copywriting. Um, and I, I do confess to feeling something of a pro sign of being such esteemed um, AI speakers around me. This is very much me to my phone in the water of this. So forgive me if there's an element of sort of ready sucking eggs here, but hopefully it'll be something interesting for everyone. Anyway, why altogether elsewhere? Well, if Alex thought he had wanky quotes in his speech, see nothing yet because I'm reminded of um, the support of this guy to make one or two points here. Does anyone know who this guy is? I, I wouldn't do that, but that is the poet W. H. Auden. And why did I call it this help? Well, um, in the 1940s, Auden wrote a poem called The Fall of Rome. It's a, it's a fantastic piece of work. If you're into poetry, definitely try and read it. Um, and in that poem, he described the crumbling of civilization around him as he saw it. The, the, um, the way that society was breaking down. And um, so he uses the, um, the story of the fall of the Roman Empire as a metaphor for the destruction of modern society. But anyway, to cut the long story short, at one point, point in the poem, he reaches this. He says, Caesar's stool bed is warm, as an unimportant clerk writes, I do not like my work on a pink official form. And taking Caesar's double bed aside, the rest of that could be seen to describe the position a lot of copywriters find themselves in today. You think back to the 60s, the 70s, 80s, copywriting was in the golden age. It was a time of Don Draper, long London lunches, who were revered and uh, rewarded for their fantastic work. But then, with the um, democratising influence of the internet, for example, proliferation of technology, insatiable demand for content, everyone suddenly became a writer. Everyone could write, there was no value to it. So while the quantity of content comp copy went through the roof, the quality of copy went through the floor. <coughs> And so the poor writer found himself in the position of the unimportant clerk, unloved, not liking their work. And then, really to twist the knife, along comes artificial intelligence and the rise of the copywriter, the AI copywriter. And this is a pretty significant step, but no surprise really, because if you think about copywriting, it's always been a discipline of systems, of techniques, of science, of studying of what's gone before, what's worked before, and putting all that into practice to cope with something. It's what copywriters have always done. But the difference with the AI copywriter, however, is that it can do all of that on a colossal scale. Um, by analysing previous copy and content, it can decide what's worked, what hasn't worked, and just generate a multitude of ideas at the click of a button. So you have people like the Chinese giant Alibaba, for example, and their uh, marketing arm Ali Mama, which have just introduced an AI copywriter. This system scans millions of pieces of content from their gigantic digital network, um, applying uh, NLP, to generate content that's really, really high performing. And all the advertiser has to do at this point is click a button that says produce smart copy with the multitude of ideas at their hand straight away. The claim is that their platform can generate 20,000 lines of copy a second and it's actually passed the Turing test. So it's pretty clever stuff what they've got. And that's not the only one. A, you know, there are hundreds of these things out there, but this is another one. Oh, sorry, I've missed the point here. Um, the point about this is it's not just called calculated copy either. The user can choose whether it's promotional, fun, poetic, heartwarming. There are sort of emotional human parameters that can be put around alongside that. And so you have another um, player in the field, Casado, for example. <coughs> These guys have just started talking about creating personalised emotional engagement at scale from a machine, this is. Now this, this is a system, a platform that's been around for a couple of years now. It's been <coughs> successful in generating email subject lines, web headers, web content, online advertising, and it's been said to beat human writers in every single test it's ever done, about one that Richard Norton claims he won. But, um, I've got well, some of these rooms, who's also part of that, and they can stand. Okay, well, two people in the world have beat them, and they're both here. Lucky you. But, but this, uh, and this is, I think, the, the, the sort of the point of this sort of meeting, this the sort of stuff that Tom Alice was pointing, uh, pointing out earlier. This isn't the time for copywriters to go running through the hills screaming, you know, these machines are going to kill us all. What actually it's doing for us is it's taking away a lot of the donkey work, a lot of the, a lot of the churn, and it's doing a lot of the analysis for us. So the copywriter becomes the parameter setter for the machine, the curator of what's produced, and the sort of refiner. And I, I would say sort of, 
the analogy I would make is the really top class copywriter now is the superstar DJ rather than the musician in the first place. Um, and so that's really exciting stuff, but for me it's still not the full story. It's not really where we could take AI and copywriting, to be honest. And for that, I'll return to Mr. Auden. And in the rest of the poem, he reaches the end of the poem, he's written about this horrible, decayed society. And suddenly, the last verse is this. Altogether elsewhere, vast herds of reindeer move across miles and miles of golden moss, silently and very fast. Beautiful piece of writing, completely looks, of course, of what's gone before. And it really says there's something else out there. There's something underlying, something away from the administrative world, the churn of copy, something that really can move people and stir their heart. And that's really where I'd love to see creative AI and copy heading. It's not easy, that's really, really not an easy task. And if you look at the attempts that have gone to date or in the past to get machines to write in a creative conceptual way, if you begin thinking we're years and it's probably centuries away from that, a famous example which I'm sure a lot of you have seen is when a neural network was fed the first Harry, four Harry Potter novels, for example, was asked to write a new chapter based on what it had learned. This was the outcome of that, which I'll read. The Malfoys, said Hermione. Harry was watching me. He looked like Madame Maxi. And she showed up the wrong staircase and made it himself. I'm afraid I've definitely been suspended from power. No chance. Indeed, said Smith. She put his head back behind them and read groups as they crossed the corner and turned it down onto their ink lamp. The picture of his spoon and the doorbell rang. It was a lot cleaner down in London. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is funny and it is quite insane, but at the same time, there's something really clever going on there in terms of attempt at interpretation. And when you think about this fact that I'm about to say, you really see where things are going. Because in 2016, an AI written novel actually got through the first round of judging in a national literary contest in Japan. That novel was called The Day a Computer Wrote a Novel. <laughs> I write with joy, which I experienced for the first time, and kept writing with excitement. The Day a Computer Wrote a Novel. Computer, placed its priority on the pursuit of its own joy, stopped working for humans. And I think it's, it's quite spectacularly good. Um, it was admittedly co authored by a team of humans, but they didn't actually get themselves involved in the concept or the emotion. What they did was to give structure to the plot, sort of a bit of gender reassignment when it went a bit awry in there. But um, I, I think you can't argue the fact that it proves that machines are capable of writing emotional. Um, uh, moving and, and absolutely conceptual content. And that's really where I think the interest starts for me in terms of copywriting. If we can take that sort of learning, that sort of intelligence, and turn the whole thing on its head, then the game changes for me. Because if we start asking the machine to come up with the concepts, the things at the start of the, the game, rather than the polished, finished article that we can just apply to things, then we, 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 we find ourselves new avenues of exploration, new ways of looking at things, new approaches to advertising, new approaches to marketing, um, and new ways of actually getting people to do stuff. And it's, it's something actually that got me thinking, there's was, was something shared in Tom's um, I'm about WhatsApp group actually, it was, a, it was a, uh, an experiment where they fed, two, I think it could be right if I'm wrong here, 240 um, it, designs of classic chairs from the 20th century, and it asked, they asked the machine to come up and find the essence of what was a classic chair, what was the beautiful chairness of it, and this is what came up with it. And it so, it, see, this is, this is what the, the machine started recognising to be a beautiful thing, what, what people recognise, and it was up to the human then to hone it into something wonderful. And you can see it's an absolutely useless chair. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that there's something aesthetically beautiful and quite emotionally lovely, that shows me where we should be going with copywriting and creative AI. Because if we do that, if we do, like, as Auden did in his book, really change the tone and change the paradigm and look at it in a completely different way, that we really do find ourselves all together elsewhere. Thank you. Hey.